Hey, what's going on guys? George Gonzalez, and I'm back here with another video. We're gonna be talking about the pros and the cons of living and moving to Houston, Texas. So, um, thanks again for watching guys. Hit that like button and go ahead the uh, subscribe to the channel. If you're looking for things about Houston, Texas, especially about moving or relocating to Houston, Texas. This is what this channel is all about. And I appreciate all the comments that you guys are posting. And just briefly on that, if you're asking specifics, um, you know, I'll maybe like screenshot some of the things. I cannot comment on those things. I can simply uh, direct you to those uh, sources of where you could look um, into the uh, demographics. That's the best I can do on that. But besides that, let's talk about things that um, you definitely want to consider when moving to Houston, Texas. So let's start off with the cons. Let me give you the ugly stuff first. And ugly, well, not necessarily ugly, but you know, the, the cons. We'll, we'll start with that first. Traffic. And this is coming from, you know, again, I grew up in Houston. The traffic obviously has gotten worse and worse, but that is growing pains of a growing city. <sighs> Let me give you examples of what I'm talking about when I'm referring to traffic. Pretty much not gridlock, but bumper to bumper traffic in all the main arteries. So that's gonna be 610 freeway, that's gonna be 59, that's gonna be I-10, and those are the main freeways that are like in, uh, in the actual city of Houston. So that's to be expected. The good thing is you can expect the traffic uh, rush hours anywhere from three to six o'clock instead of all day in some cities. So I guess it's a con for us, maybe not a con depending on where you're coming from, but it, this is something that you, you should know about. Toll roads. Toll roads can be a con. There are, um, sometimes they do provide relief depending on your commute, but toll roads are definitely in Houston, Texas, I-10 has a built-in toll road. Uh, 59, I believe, has switched to the HOV being an HOV slash toll. And um, uh, toll road 99, which is the next big loop, right? You have your 610 loop, it's toll free. The big, uh, bigger loop around that is Beltway 8. That, is ha that has tolls. And then toll road 99, that's the next biggest one. That's a huge expansion. They're about halfway done. But the, the tolls on that are extremely high just because it's a newer toll road. The next traffic that you're gonna be dealing with is gonna be if you're living out in the suburbs. And normally you wouldn't think that you'd be dealing with traffic living in the suburbs, but you have to keep in mind, especially if you're living in these larger communities that are master planned, it might take you 10 minutes to get to your house, <laughs> right? Like there's one over here, uh, not far from me, um, Silver actually. So I'll use those as an example. And um, like, for example, Siena. Siena is notorious for, you know, you can get to Siena, right, off of Highway 6, but then from there to get to your house, it could be a solid five, maybe 10 minutes, depending if it's, you know, school time. So that's the kind of traffic that, you know, maybe you're not expecting, but it definitely can be unexpected, especially if you're not used to living in a master plan community. And then the third thing with traffic has to do with the public transportation system. And unfortunately down here in Houston, is not that great. Uh, there is a Metro, there is a Metro rail. Metro rail is, is downtown, um, but it has limited places and it does not go everywhere in Houston. Downtown it does, but downtown is, is a tiny, tiny space compared to all of Houston and everything else uh, outside of that is basically being serviced by metro buses. So public transportation is definitely not the best, especially if you're living out in the suburbs. Now, don't get me wrong, specific cities can have or be subsidized by the metro with their own busing system, but for the most part, it is not a great transport uh, public transportation system and um, which then I guess of course lends itself to not being a great walkable place, especially in the suburbs. So that is something that you definitely wanna keep, uh, keep in mind, especially if you're moving down here with one car. And then of course this ties in to the growing city phase, growing city phase, and that's to do with construction. 
um, because the Houston is growing so much and uh, obviously there's more roads hitting the pavement than ever, um, construction is going to be something that's happening. Um, we dealt with it for, for many, many years along I-10 and then we uh, recently just finished up 290, which is a great freeway now that opens up. Um, gives you great access from northwest of Houston down into uh, down into Houston, but you're still going to have tons of traffic. I believe 610 is having uh, a lot of repairs done, and uh, along uh, Galleria, and then there's going to be a massive um, a massive uh, project that's going to be going down uh, near downtown near George R. Brown, where they're supposed to be um, putting that freeway underground something like that it's a massive project it's going to be great for the city of houston once it's all said and done but until that happens which could be another 10 years from now um you can't enjoy it so you know during that time especially for going from the outskirts um and you're crossing through uh, the other side of houston that's something to consider so either you're looping you're slingshotting uh, around houston or you have to deal with the traffic going through Houston. So that's another thing that you wanna keep in mind. Con number two, and that's gonna be the weather. Now, if you are new to Houston or you haven't been down here for an extended period of time, you may think or be familiar with Houston being this warm, sunny place. And that can be true on a lot of days, but what I'm referring to is Houston just having you know, being so undecisive. <laughs> so what does that mean? Well, you could wake up um, on a regular work day, have a jacket in the morning, and you, uh, you're not gonna need that jacket for lunch. Um, and in fact, you might need sunglasses and a hat because it is so, so hot and so humid. That's what I'm talking about. You, you probably need two or three different outfits for a regular day living in Houston. Just this past week, we're in uh, April 2nd or April 4th. Just this past week, uh, during in the middle of the week, we were having 70 to 80 degree weather. And then on middle of the week, it decided to midday drop from a high of like 75, give or take, down to about 60 which is cold for here in Houston. So if you were out enjoying a shirt and some shorts, you know, tennis shoes, and you were out and you were leaving that place hours later, you would have been cold. Um, and besides just the, you know, frantic mood swings and temperatures and, and you know, weather here in Houston, we do have random showers of rain constantly. So. And it's not all day. So sometimes you wake up, you'll have some showers in the morning or midday or wherever. Um, but it's basically 50-50 chance of rain for the most part of the year. Which leads me now into flooding. Okay, so recently, if you saw all over the news, um, the winter storm UD um, wrecked havoc down here in Houston. And it was very unfortunate and it was very um, not common. Now. With that being said, and I, and I say this living here with all consideration, though with the true thing that we as Houstonians um, really are more uh, accustomed to and more apt to prefer, prepare for are hurricanes, right? Hurricane season down here is real. Um, I'm pretty sure it's not as bad as Florida because they're out, they're out you know, in the, their peninsula. But down here in Houston, we have constant threats of hurricanes. And then the second thing, the two parters to that is, we usually don't get hit with hurricanes, um, not at a high frequency, but the threat is always there every single year. But the more uh, pressing issue is flooding. So usually we don't get hit by hurricanes, but a lot of times we will have tropical storms and that flood or that, um, massive surge of water will affect us. Houston doesn't have a flooding problem. Houston has a drainage problem. And what do I mean by that? Well, the masses amount of water that we get in short periods of time, it just, it doesn't have enough time 
to flood out or to, to drain out is essentially what's happening. So that is one thing you definitely want to consider when you're moving down to Houston. It's definitely con um, just because you might have to sell your car to get a truck. Having trucks down here is not only a Texan thing, but it is something that because of flooding, it is very helpful. All right. Cheers to the coffee gang. Oh, that's right. So two more things here on the weather. Um, humidity. Humidity makes the weather down here different. It's just built different. What do I mean by that? Well, it makes humidity, it makes it that much hotter and that much colder. So our colds down here, when we get, you know, below like 50s or 40, it is, feels way different. I've been in Colorado before in 30 degree weather in a t-shirt for a few minutes, but it does not feel the same as 30 degree weather down here in Houston. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's because of our proximity to um, Galveston. I don't know, but the temperatures feel that much more intense due to that humidity. And also because of that humidity, we have way more mosquitoes. So getting that repellent, the mosquito repellent, you definitely want to get that because a lot of times uh, we can get warnings for uh, whatever disease could be in the mosquitoes, you know, like West Nile, things like that. So definitely a real thing. And then we have, you know, trucks that come in. If it's a really bad mosquito season, that will actually spray the neighborhoods to help mitigate, um, you know, the, uh, the disease spreading through the mosquitoes. So weather, that's what you have to consider. All right, so here is the professional and me coming at you with another con with Houston, Texas. And I'm pretty sure after this, you are just, you're not gonna wanna move here. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, you're, not, you're not gonna wanna move here after you hear this, um, or maybe you will. So what is that? I'm talking about taxes. And as you can see from the previous videos, taxes are important, but it's because of the tax rates that we pay down here. So number one, we don't have a state income tax. It's only the federal, but what you, in exchange for that, you have uh, property taxes. And a lot of times, I guess, out of state, I, I didn't probably should look it up here. I probably should have done some, some more homework on this. But tax rates on properties out of state could be half of what you are going to be paying down here uh, in Houston or any surrounding cities and suburbs. Um, because, let me give an example. So, if you have a uh, $250,000 house, the average tax rate for something like that is going to be. So also just a quick tip, older neighborhoods will usually have a lower tax rate, but it's not always guaranteed. And newer neighborhoods will typically have higher tax rates. That is usually what happens, but there are exceptions to the rule. So let's just say a newer house, $250,000 house, let's just say it's an average of 3.2% tax rate. That means your tax bill is 8,000, which means your you know, taxes will be escrowed with your payment. So that means that once, when you're budgeting and you're online and you're calculating your payment, you're like, oh, great, my, uh, my payment. And those calculators usually give you principal interest only. Like, oh, my payment's only, you know, $1,200, $1,300. Houston is super affordable. Hold a minute. You got to add. Well, that's, that's a terrible factoration right there. <laughs> you got to add another $670 to that bill plus your insurance. So that's something you definitely want to consider because it, if you were expecting or estimating, you know, like $300 and then you come down here and you got to pay an extra $300, um, then you thought, well, somebody made a whoopsie. So, which is why I say um, the taxes are a con and you have to verify the taxes because they can change, right? I've seen some, uh, taxes in, in the in the city be super low, like in the two 2.2s, 2.4s, and then sometimes I've seen them close to three, right? Which is why I say commonly older homes will have lower taxes, newer homes will have higher tax rates, but it's not always um, it's not always the case. Sometimes you can have exceptions to that rule. So a couple things that you want to keep in mind when you're calculating the taxes is just to make sure what zone it's in, as far as if it's in an improvement zone, they call it the TERS zone. And you'll see this in neighborhoods that are 
they're trying to be um, either renovated or um, redeveloped, right? So this, this, they're adding an extra tax rate to the bill to put it back into the community. Um, what else? Oh, and then newer subdivisions because they uh, sometimes new subdivisions will be tied to new schools. So therefore the new school will have a higher bond which increases the tax rate. Keep that in mind. And lastly, uh, we still don't know what we're doing with the Astrodome. So that's another con. Oh well. Coffee gang, coffee gang, hit that like button. Comment below your favorite coffee. All right, so pros, pros, pros. So we've been bashing Houston real bad. Now we're gonna hit to the pros. And the pro number one is gonna be affordability. Now you may have thought that, oh, totally missed out on the boat, can't move down here, uh, can't buy a house, whatever. And I'm gonna say this to my, um, my peeps living here. And uh, if, if you, have seen or have looked at the market, you can tell the market right now has been very crazy um, as far as just offers, uh, bidding wars, increased home values, etc. But with that being said, and this is coming from an agent that I look at homes all day as far as availability, solds, etc., it's still affordable. <laughs> it is still affordable and it's one of those things, I say that because the, traje the trajectory, trajectory, it's, our values have still room to grow. Um, there's still a ton of businesses that are coming down here to Texas and around Houston, and the demand is gonna continue to build. So, it's gonna be a minute before um, we can call it no longer affordable. The medium home price in Houston is still, I think, about $300. Um, out in the suburbs, it's about $250. Um, actually, I'll lie. In Houston, you're probably looking at like a medium price of like $400, like realistically. If you Google, it'll say like $300, $350, but you're really talking about closer to $400. And then, of course, you want something newer, over half a million. But with that being said, living in such a diverse and big, big and growing city as Houston, the fact that you can still get a new house for $250,000, rented out in the suburbs, or even 400,000 living in Houston, that is still affordable. So, to all my peeps, don't, don't wait, don't sit it out. Keep that in mind, it's still affordable. Oh yeah. So, what makes it affordable? It went on a mini rent. What makes it affordable? Well, cost of living is still pretty low down here. So that's something you want to keep in mind. You may pay a little bit more because of the increase in home values, but cost of living, eating out, all that is still the same. Other thing too is, as a homeowner, you get a homestead. What does that mean? It sounds like Chinese. Well, basically it means that since you're your primary residence, you actually get a discount at a rate on your taxes. So the $8,000 that I was talking about, you'll have to pay that for the first year. But once you go into the next year, you file your homestead, it's a average of $2,600 reduction. Your tax bill is, it goes from $8,000 all the way down to $6,400. So that is a, a pretty substantial discount. So then your tax, your monthly tax escrow will go from 670 down to 533. So again, pretty substantial discount. And this is a Texas thing given by the homestead. Pro number three, the food. The food cannot, cannot say enough. If you are bored of always eating at chain restaurants, move to Houston, Texas, you're gonna have all the options. You're gonna be able to eat at all the big chains, all the high, uh, high dollar chains, and especially down in Houston, just tons of independent shops to uh, eat and drink at. You know, you're gonna have all your different types of foods, your uh, Asian foods, 
your Middle Eastern foods, Mediterranean food, Greek food, you'll have um, great communities, great Hispanic communities, Mexican food, you'll have Salvadorian food, Honduran food, they have Jamaican food, like anything you want, you can basically find out here in Houston. You might have to, yeah, of course, drive to it. It's not gonna be around the block from your house, but the fact that you can drive and in driving distance be eating all different types of food all over the world, you know, even Ethiopian food, like I'm telling you, all the different types of foods you can get down here. So that is a huge bonus, just having great diversity down here of what you can eat. So we'll start off with, hey, our best guy here. Uh, Houston has one of the, I think, the biggest medical centers in the world, all right? Uh, MD Anderson Cancer um, Cancer Hospital, one of the best in the world. Um, it's just, it's a great place if you're looking for employment, right? And it's in a great district. There's its own medical medical center, medical district, uh, right next to the um, the uh, I'm blanking out. Um, right next to the museum district. <laughs> Besides our huge and massive medical center, we have a growing tech center. Uh, Google has just a uh, rent out a uh, office down in uh, downtown Houston and then of course we have other big tech companies that are continuing to uh, want to move to Houston all right and then one thing that I think people often overlook and that's gonna be NASA we have a great aerospace engineering um, community down here that's gonna be closer to uh, Clear Lake and Galveston but Hey, they're, they're growing as well with SpaceX, pushing the reins, like that's another uh, great economy down there. And then of course you have your everlasting oil and gas sector along I-10. And of course oil and gas uh, has been kind of going down for a handful of years, but it's still there. And I think a lot of the oil and gas will be transitioning to green energy, but nonetheless the energy sector will still be there and will be a prominent figure in Houston and the economy. We have all three major sport leagues in Houston. We have our Houston Texans, we have the Houston Astros who just started, and then we have the, um, <laughs> what's the Astros, oh, Houston Rockets. Now I will say uh, all those three teams are not doing uh, particularly great right now, but nonetheless, professional sport teams, we've got you covered, and we have all the stadiums, and the Cougars did make it to um, the Final Four. So they got beat, but they made it pretty far. So College Ball, U of H is another growing university. That's another thing too. Our universities are getting up there. They're doing really, really well. And uh, another, great, another good idea, if you're looking to either move down here or diversify in some passive real estate. And the last thing I'm gonna wrap it up here, I've been talking for far too long, and that's gonna be our parks. Texas is known for having tons of parks and Houston is no slouch. Did you know that Houston has one of the biggest parks in the world, a Memorial Park? Memorial Park is actually almost double the size of New York City Central Park. Like, if I can find the overlay, it's funny how massive Memorial Park is. It is a huge park. There's tons of activities that you can do there. They're constantly um, improving it. Eastern Glades, I, I visited there with my wife. And that is a beautiful new addition to Memorial Park. Besides that, if you just wanna you know, have some outdoor activities, they have a huge trail to run around. Um, always filled every day, especially on the weekends. It's a great little place that you wanna see. And it's right inside the 610 Loop. And then of course, if city living is not, your, is not your jam, but you're out in the suburbs, a lot of the suburbs, especially the master plan communities, they have a ton of trails set up, they have a ton of bike trails set up. And then if you don't have one, like where I live, we don't have that. There is always gonna be a park within a 10 to 15 minute drive of where you live at that you can always go enjoy. So I will say, you know, I'm supposed to be in the prawn section here, uh, pro section a small little con so i wish they had more dog parks um i have one it's about 15 minutes away from me i'm just nitpicking i want one closer but besides that guys that's gonna do it for me guys pro uh pros and cons of living in houston texas 
If there's anything specifically you're curious about, go ahead and comment below. Be happy to answer that question and a follow-up video. That's going to do it for me, guys. Peace.